right, good morning, church. Welcome to Youth Sunday. If you couldn't figure it out by now, the youth are going to be leading your program today. My name is Shannon Reynolds. I am honored to be the youth director here at this amazing church that we've been a part of for over 20 years, and now I'm honored to be um, attempting to be in control of the youth group. So um, we hope you enjoy today's service. If you're a guest with us today, just know we don't have visitors. We only have guests. And you are welcome to stop by the, the visitor's booth out there in the narthex. We have a gift for you. And we like to greet everybody when we get here by saying, peace be with you. And the response is, and also with you. So let's stand and greet one another this morning. Hi, my name is Maddie Madewell. Today's scripture reading is from Matthew 5, 14 through 16 and Matthew 6, 22 to, through 23. We invite you to read along with us from the New Testament. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. No one after la lighting a lamp puts it under a bushel basket. But on the lampshade and it gives light to all in the house in the same way let your light shine before others so that they may see your good work and give glory to your father in heaven the eyes is the, the eye is the lamp of the body so if your eye is healthy your whole body will be full of light but if your eyes are unhealthy your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in your darkness, how is, how is the darkness? This is the word of the God to, for the people of God. Amen.
morning. My name is Kinsey Madewell. Please stand and join me to the call of worship, <laughs> followed by our affirmation of faith. This morning, Lord, we come to worship you. This week, Lord, we live to be disciples of your word. All our lives, Lord, we look to you. You alone provide us with your will, which, for, which is forever good, pleasing, and perfect. In our affirmation of faith, I believe in the God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, born of, oh, wrong part. Born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, he was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From the she saw in the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of our sins, the resurrection of the body, and life of the everlasting. Amen. Hello, my name is Olivia Brown. Please lift up the names on the back of your bulletin this week, as well as all the prayer requests that remain on our hearts. And join me as you pray the prayer he taught us to say, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite the ushers down, and as they are coming to the front, I want to direct your attention to the screens, because we're going to show what the youth have done this summer and this year, and they've done amazing things. So as you prepare your gifts, will you please pray with me? Dear Lord, thank you for giving us the opportunity to be kingdom builders. Lord, I pray as this congregation gives generously, they see what seeds they're planting and the fruit that's coming. Lord, it's in your son's name I pray. Amen. If you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles, you've been hearing the same old voice of the same old lies. If you try to build the same old holes inside, there's a better life. There's a better life.
Hello, my name is Luke Brown. Today's scripture reading is from Matthew 4, 5, 14 through 16. And, and Matthew 6, 22 through 23. We invite you to read along with us. From the New Testament, Matthew 5, 14 through 16. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under a bushel basket, but on, the, on a lampstand. And it gives light to all the house. And it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see the good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. And from the New Testament, Matthew, Matthew 6, 22 through 23. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is unhealthy, your body will be full of darkness. If the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. So at this time, before I give a short little sermon, I would like to invite a few youth up to share about their experiences. So first, I'm going to welcome Jack Yates to come on up and talk about his time on the junior high mission trip. Good morning. Today I'm going to talk about the junior high mission trip and the three things that I enjoyed the most about it. First of all, I learned a lot about how to do good work with power tools and how to stay hydrated. <laughs> Secondly, we had lots of fun at the church that we were staying in. Um, it was very fun. We got to hang out and play nine square. Third, we got to do all of that while s serving Jesus. We were helping build the kingdom of God by, wor by doing work for others. And that's what I enjoyed the most about uh, the junior high mission trip. And now Sarah Tubbs will come share about her experience on the high school mission trip. Hello. My name is Sarah Tubbs, and I had the privilege to go on the high school mission trip with almost 30 other volunteers and youth in June. We helped with a few projects to help share God's love to those in need. We were able to stay at the McMurray University in Adeline, which was excellent and convenient because we were close to the places that we were going to help. We did three projects instead of one, and we got to sleep in a bed. <laughs> On the first day, we headed down to a storm drain for our partnership with Habitat for Humanity to clean up litter. With the youth and adult volunteers' hard work, the group thoroughly tidied up a half a mile long area. After finishing, we went to a nearby park to have lunch, and while eating, we met a local news crew looking to film people's ideas on, staying how, on how to stay cool in the heat and thoughts on going over the speed limit. The news crew interviewed a few of our youth who gave phony and goofy names for reasons. <laughs> we checked out the St. Paul Methodist Church in downtown Abilene and, pre and prepared rooms and hallways to be painted. When we returned to the college, we cooled off at the pool and ate a hearty dinner prepared by Mr. Bobby Larry, the head cook for the university, who kindly made us breakfast and dinner every day. On the second and third days, the group returned to the church and to paint and repair the roomy youth room, the hallway, and four classrooms. All the kids and adult volunteers were terrific and incredibly determined at every job they had. Thanks to the kids' hard work and the adults' patience and experience, we made the church look neat and tidy for their youth group. After we finished, they invited us to have dinner with their youth group and hang out with the kids. We played basketball and kickball with them. We tried to energize and stimulate their youth program. Their youth leader gave us a, devo a devotion after the meal, which was really neat. On the fourth day, the last day of the mission trip, we volunteered at the Adeline Zoo. The group did well, from painting exhibits to cleaning pens, setting up a display, and even cleaning a supply closet. <laughs> after the work, we toured the zoo and saw many neat animals. I had fun on the mission trip, and I'm sure everyone else did too. I'm so happy that we shared God's love by helping others around us. And Aiden is going to go after Kelly, who is going to share her experience about the high school mission trip.
and I'm a part of the youth group here at Alito United Methodist Church, and I would like to take a couple minutes to just talk about the mission trip we went on last month. I would like to start off by starting off on the Sunday we left. We met up at the quad, and we packed our stuff on the trailers and then the vans and hit the road towards Abilene. When we made it to Abilene, we drove to McMurray University, where we unpacked our stuff in the dorms. While we were there, Mr. Russell Smith was kind enough to tag along with us on the first night, which was also Father's Day. He brought his guitar and played music while we worshiped. We all gathered in the living area of the dorms and we worshiped together. When I looked around and saw all the amazing young teenagers gathering around to worship, it truly showed me that I was in the right place and I was surrounded with the people I was supposed to be. The first day of the mission trip, we were told we were cleaning out the riverbed behind a shopping center. And of course, none of us wanted to be outside in the heat all day, cleaning up trash. But when we got there, although it was nothing at all what we expected, we got our gloves, sunscreen, and trash bags and got to work. With everyone's help, we got the riverbed cleared out from trash and debris quicker than we had all thought. Sorry, I lost my flow. Um, and seeing all my peers getting together and working hard for something that isn't theirs or something that they would never see again because it was the right thing to do really made me realize that God was with us during that trip. He helped us work hard, work together, and bond with each other. After we finished with the first night, we found a cute, or sorry, after we finished with the riverbed, we found a cute park and ate lunch, and then we headed back to the dorms to change. After we headed back to the dorms to change, we headed to the church, St. Paul, that we would work on later in the week, and we started prepping the church for painting. So we were taping things down and really just trying to get a feel on what we were going to do later on in the week. The following day, we had breakfast and had a good start on the day and went to the church. We originally had, I think, around four rooms to paint, and it changed to six with how quick we were working in the church. Um, let's see. Everyone had their own little job, and we had to put our minds to it. Some of us were painting. Some of us were tearing apart wood pallets. And truly, it was one of the biggest moments of the trip of where I saw God was at the church because the church had lost a lot of members during COVID, and their youth group was very small and trying to grow. But in our group of amazing kids used their hard work and dedication towards this church that they really had no idea about until the mission trip, and it truly made me happy to see how much we truly wanted this church to grow and expand. The second day, we definitely got sweaty and dirty, but man, was it worth it because we got so much done. The third day, we were finishing our last things we had to do. I remember walking to the restroom and seeing every single kid working hard to help that church and get the last touch-ups done. After we had finished, we went back to the dorms to change and headed back to St. Paul, where we joined their church to dinner and worship. Another place I saw God was when their youth group and our youth group were playing kickball together and making fun memories. Afterwards, the pastors or the pastor did an amazing worship where we got to see their beautiful sanctuary. It was truly just breathtaking, their sanctuary compared to ours. It was, I had no words. On the fourth day, which was Thursday, we headed to the Abilene Zoo where we had painted enclosures. We had all split up and started our own little projects. I'm not going to lie, it was pretty hot that day, especially with being outside, but everyone had their job and got it done well. When I tell you, God was definitely with us at the zoo because no one went crazy in that heat. We headed back from the zoo to the dorms, and we had some free time where we all gathered and bonded together, which at least for me was so wholesome and one of my favorite memories. On Friday, we all packed up all of our things and headed back home. I think we were all really tired and ready to go back because we didn't even stop for lunch or anything on the way back. The trip was truly amazing and filled with fun memories I will cherish my entire life. And I, if you are somebody who is wanting to join the quad or you're going into sixth grade, I totally, totally, totally recommend doing it. I think it is one of the best things you will ever do. You will make the most amazing memories, the most amazing friends, and you will truly have an amazing time. Thank you. All right, it looks like we found Aiden, so he's going to share his experience. Praise God. I was on the um, junior high mission trip to um, Bruceville Eddy, and uh, it was truly amazing. And I'm, I'm here to tell you a little bit about uh, how it was and what we did. And the first thing I would like to say is Hunter nearly broke my foot. Um, I still think it was intentional. He says, he says that it wasn't even his fault, you know. So, uh, good, off to a good start. Well, uh, at Bruce Valetti, um, it was a very small, like, when you went in there, it was pretty small. And when we went to the church, it was just an amazing experience. It's a very old church, stained glass, beautiful. And 
I was just so, so grateful that they allowed us to be in their doors and let us stay in there in such a historical church. It was, it was amazing. The people there were so hospitable, just like Miss Reynolds said, that they were shining their light in. It was amazing. I'm so thank thank you for um, Pastor Robin. Um, and I was on the uh, deck building team, so I was building a deck for a lady who just uh, won a battle with cancer and just recently had spine surgery. So she was inside basically the whole time she needed to rest. So, but she had this very old porch, front and back porch. The back porch, I'm pretty sure, it wouldn't lasted a week more if we didn't do anything about it. So the first day, we came down there, and we just tore it out with crowbars and hammers. Just tore it out within 10 minutes, too. So then, the second day, we had to get two other groups to take the front porch and move it to the back porch. We relocated it. And then we built a whole new front porch with, a, with new steps and whole new wood and a roof so that she could sit out there without having to worry about falling or tripping or any of that because, you know, she just won a battle with cancer and back surgery. You don't want her to get hurt again. And it was just a truly amazing experience. And um, I thank Mr. Hunter and the Bruceville Eddie for letting us show our missions and outreaching. And thank you. I hope you got a sense of how amazing our trips were. I feel like they both used that word, amazing, several times, because it truly was. Before I share the sermon with you, would you please pray? Dear Lord, thank you for letting us be your light. Thank you for these students who are willing to be your disciples. Lord, let the words that I speak here today bring glory to your beautiful name. It's in your son's name I pray. Amen. So it's good to be here with everyone this morning to celebrate these students. My name is Hunter Reynolds. I'm the Assistant Director of Student Ministries here at Alito United Methodist Church. It is a pure joy to work with these students throughout the year, watching them grow into the disciples of their generation. And yes, I can say it's actually quite fun working with my mother. There are not many mother-son youth leader duos out there, but we make a pretty good team. Church, you should be extremely proud of these students. On their two mission trips this summer, they tackled and successfully completed more projects than I have ever seen completed on a mission trip. They worked so diligently, we seriously had to find more work on both trips. That's a good problem to have. Amen? Our mission trip theme this year was Eyes to See. Every evening when we gathered for worship, we talked about where we saw God that day. Indeed, being a faithful witness requires exercise. At the start of each week, sharing of God's sightings seemed limited. The students seemed quiet to share. But by the end of the week, the students were eager to share the many moments where they had seen God in an appreciative client, in a helpful teammate, in a patient adult crew leader, in a completed project, in a rare breeze or cloud coverage, in the pool, in the popsicles. They were seeing God almost everywhere. On one of the nights, we tasked the teams with building a Lego creation to reflect where they had seen God that day. Side note, it became obvious that you were never too old to play with Legos because these students went wild with the building bricks. But really, they built incredible scenes and were able to articulate exactly what it symbolized. While this was happening on the middle school mission trip, something really interesting happened before our eyes. A huge storm was brewing across Bruceville Eddy. The wind had picked up, reaching low-grade tornado speeds. In fact, the local school's roof was peeled right off. Thunder and lightning rumbled across the skies. We were in Bruceville Eddy's historic sanctuary, building Legos, when BAM! A huge lightning strike knocked out all the power. The lights went out, the AC went out. Yet as we stood in that dark sanctuary, we noticed an orange light flickering in the back. Then we realized, fire! A small old plug-in fan had caught fire when the power had surged. Luckily, Kelly O'Donnell was quick to act. She grabbed it and tossed it out in the rain. But in retrospect, the whole scene was perhaps a message from God. Maybe some of you are like me. In a sense, I can relate to that rinky-dink fan. The fan's purpose was not to be a light source. 
Yet in that moment, it transformed into a flame when it was needed most for everyone to see. Like that fan, our humanly worldly purpose may seem insignificant. You may think you are not equipped to be a light. Yet, his spirit lives in each of us. Sometimes we must defy our ordinary human purpose to fulfill God's purpose. His plan, not our plan. In truth, recognizing our own ability to shine the light is the first step in having eyes to see. How can we see God in the world if we cannot see God within our own soul? Students, I want you to always be humble, but I'm going to take a moment to brag on you. These students are what I would call faithfully advanced. They recognize how the Holy Spirit works through them, and they understand the importance of shining His light out into the world. Without shame, they put the lamp on the pedestal. They do not hide the light. Our students here, they get it. That is why they took a week out of their summer break to give back, to be the light. They were not all equipped to do the jobs. Not everyone had used a power tool before. Not everyone knew how to build a wheelchair ramp. Sometimes the work was not exactly fun. Let me tell you, these trips were some of the hottest mission trips I had ever been on. Temperatures well, well, well over 100 degrees. Yet they got every job done plus more. Of course, this should not be shocking to you, church. Are our students not a reflection of what you have taught them? Alito United Methodist Church, you set the example before them. Because you recognize Christ within you, and because you let the light shine, these students inherited eyes to see. They inherited the eyes to see God, and therefore, they learned the value in discipleship. As a community of faith, we should be proud of that. But in the midst of that celebration, it's in vital, it is vital that I point out something. There are forces out there that present a threat to the health of our church. Now, when I say church, I do not mean just this church in particular. I mean the universal church, the entire body of believers. There is a force that our students confronted and combated this summer, whether they knew it or not. You see, both the middle school and high school mission trips conducted work projects for the United Methodist Churches, Bruceville Eddy UMC and St. Paul UMC in Abilene. At Bruceville Eddy, they refurbished the church's playground, making it cleaner, safer, and more inviting for local kids. At St. Paul's, they completely redesigned the student ministry's corridor, repainting several rooms, building artistic window covers, and assembling a countertop. I've been on several mission trips, but this was the first year that my crews actually did work for the church. These churches were struggling to fill their pews every Sunday morning. They were financially barely staying afloat. Their children's and student ministries were trying to kick off ever since COVID. This made me wonder. Unfortunately, when I look at the world around me, it becomes clear to me as to why these churches are struggling. There are people who have prioritized their political and societal stances above their faith. People who have cast judgment on their neighbors based on their political views and their social status. And have seemingly forgotten that every person on this earth is a child of God who has received grace and love via the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. So, like many times before, the church has been divided. You all know what I'm talking about. What people have convinced themselves was their mission from God was maybe instead a mission for their own self-comfort. And the United Methodist churches we served were caught in the crossfire. They got hurt. Their finances, their attendance, their ability to provide programming. When unchurched people see this political friction within a church, and again, I mean the whole church body, they will simply turn around and say, see, being in a church is more trouble than it's worth. The two amazing churches we helped may not even know for certain how much longer they can stay open in the capacity that they currently are or if they can keep their current properties. What a shame. But then these students from Alito United Methodist Church showed up. Through their actions, they said the health of the church is important. Believers in Jesus Christ are stronger together. And guess what? People saw that, and they felt something. 
I am convinced that our students gave the communities they served eyes to see. Eyes to see a revival. In Abilene, we joined with St. Paul for their Wednesday evening programming. And a record number of people showed up to see the students work. We joined their students for games in the gym and for evening devotional. We created a real connection between their group and ours. One of true support. Strangers, yet brothers and sisters in Christ. And in Bruceville Eddy, local student Grady joined our crews and our youth welcomed him with open arms. One gentleman witnessed what these students had done for the community, and he confessed, You have reminded me of what it means to be a United Methodist. United. It does not mean we are subject to purity tests. It does not mean we vow some allegiance to John Wesley. It does not mean we must agree in 100% of the exact ways our fellow church members believe. It means that we are bonded together as we are all destined to receive grace through Jesus Christ because he died for our sins and he rose from the grave. We are united in the mission of spreading that good news. Grace wins, death loses. Our students have proven that they are dedicated to that cause and they have shown that they are willing to shine the light as far as it can reach. I'm extremely proud of what they have done, not just on mission trip, but throughout this past year and in my entire time with them. They strive to grow in their faith and to share it with others. So many of our students have invited their friends to attend our Bible studies here at the Quad. Just by doing that, they have shown how brave they are and how confident they are in their faith. We went from having no music at our gatherings to having full-blown worship jam sessions every Wednesday with Aiden, Christina, Sarah, and Zach devoting so much time to build and perfect their praise band. And throughout the year, they all have committed to small and big service projects, like packing snack packs, painting windows at nursing homes, and even just recently volunteering at VBS. So, you ask me, where have you seen God lately? Well, that's an easy one. Right here in front of me in all of these students who make this church so incredibly blessed. Church, will you say amen? amen. Now you see why I let him do the sermon and not me, because he's amazing. And um, if anybody would like to become a permanent fixture of Lido United Methodist Church, we would love to have you. Hunter and I will be up here to greet you if you want to make this church your church home as of today. We don't have visitors. We only have guests. So I do want to point out that we do have our, our family. They're not even guests anymore. They're now our family from Bruceville Eddie, Pastor Robin and Grady and her the rest of the family is back here, and so we are so glad that they were able to come and be a part of Alito today, and we look forward to going back and spending time with them again. And remember, as Pastor Joel says, we are all just a group of sinners trying to get it right. So if you'll please stand and join the praise band in their last song.
thank you to the other praise band for staying for both services with us. Thank you for your support. And just thank you so much for coming out. And again, this is a wonderful group of young adults, and this is your church's future. So if you have a youth that's not connected with us yet, please send them our way. We have some great things planned for this new school year. Looking forward to continuing to grow in faith with them. If you'll please pray with me. Thank you, Jesus, for each and every one of these amazing youth that I'm honored to work beside each week. Lord, please, please help us all to remember to look to you this week, even in the places that we don't always remember to look, because you are there. Remind us to shine our light so that you can help us shine bright so others may see you through us. In Christ's name we pray, and all of church said, amen. amen. Thank you. Have a great week. You turn into army.